Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel, and in this series, we are going to talk about Silver Peak's ST1 solution. A bit of history here. Uh, Silver Peak was a separate company. In fact, one of the first guys out there to have a very robust ST1 solution before it was acquired by HP Aruba, and now they've rebranded the whole solution as Edge Connect. Right, so you might hear the terms Edge Connect ST1. Uh, while people refer to the Silver Peak ST1, but both are the same. It's just a rebranding, right? Uh, that being said, we've already covered a couple of ST1 solutions in the past on the channel, um, namely Cisco's Viptela solution. We've also recently covered um, Aruba's ST branch, which is also partly a ST1 solution. So um, we're going to follow a similar format, right? We'll spend the first video where we will just discuss um, an overview of the solution, right? Uh, a quick whiteboarding session of sorts. Uh, we'll also discuss the topology which we are going to use uh, for this series. And from the next video onwards, we'll actually be doing a lot of hands-on um, sessions. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's get started, right? So let's grab my screen here. One sec. All right. So here we go. This is going to be the topology for. Um, this series, I guess, at least to begin with, um, I mean, I will explain the topology in more detail at the end of the video. Um, in addition to that, I also have a couple of links to certain public documents, right? Um, we've already talked about Aruba's validated solution guides in my previous series as well. So this is a very robust, um, uh, you know, set of documentation from Aruba, which has great details on almost all of their technology verticals, right? Campus, data center, SD-WAN, SD-Branch and everything. Uh, there is also a dedicated um, link only for SD-WAN, right? Which has some of their user guides, deployment guides and so on, right? I will be sharing these links with you um, as well as part of the video. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, we are good to kind of get started with a quick whiteboarding session. So let me grab my whiteboard, give me a second. So let's start by um, looking at the capabilities, right? So uh, we're looking at, okay, so let's take a sample customer, right? So let's assume that this customer has a um, couple of uh, branches, right? And they have like a big, uh, you know, headquarters, right? In other part of the world. and most of our customers nowadays also have some kind of uh, cloud, right? Now this could be a private cloud, it could be public cloud, right? And generally, you know, customers also have some connectivity options, which connects all these uh, various sites together. This is, this is your normal customer. And generally nowadays the, you know, most popular, um, you know, connectivity option you will see is MPLS, right? MPLS uh, is what you see in most of the networks. Perfect. So this is our sample customer, right? So imagine this customer comes to me and tells me that, um, you know, they've got some problems with this network, right? Um, you know, this is a common deployment model. This is a common network design, but with this, right, they have some problems. Now, what are the problems? The first thing is uh, when I look at this topology, right, I'm going to ask them, why are you just using MPLS? I mean, MPLS is um, costly, right? So let's actually call that out already, right? So MPLS is costly to begin with. That's that's like a problem number one. Um, so my question is gonna be, why don't you use some other transport? Why don't you use cheaper transports, right? Uh, for at least sending some of the traffic, you know, uh, between the sites. So uh, they're gonna tell me that, Joel, I can't do that because security is very important for me, right? I can't just send traffic on the public internet because, you know, internet is not secure, broadband internet is not very secure, right? So that's why they don't have, uh, um, they don't have broadband as of today, right? Third point is they're also going to tell me, okay, so we've got this cost problem, we got this security problem, they also have other problem, which is, um, you know, the employees who are working out of these offices or the employees who are trying to, I don't know, use one of the application, which is on the cloud, they are all complaining of lower productivity right? Uh, ignored my spellings, but they are also complaining of lower productivity. Okay, so this is going to be my problem statement. They're going to come back, they're going to tell me that these are my three things which I want you to solve. Can, can a ST1 solution solve this? 
right? So yes, the short answer is yes, right? This is literally the blueprint of, um, you know, what something like a normal ST1 in this case, Silver Peak can really solve, right? Okay, so the very first thing, cost. With cost, what we can actually do is we can now add cheaper transports, right? We can add broadband internet, we can add say LTE as a backup option and all of that, right? Now how, why are you able to add it now? Don't you still have the problems with security? I mean, the problems with security are going to be solved because, you know, I mean, even in, even in the earlier case, you could have technically used things like side to side VPNs and all of that, but all of that you would have to do manually, right? But with case of ST1, right, what happens is, I mean, it's a, it's an STN to begin with, right? So, um, you know, now you can use this cheaper transports, but at the same time, you can send traffic on them, you know, encrypted way because you can use IPsec tunnels, right? But um, at the same time, you don't have to sit and build the IPsec tunnels manually, right? You have the orchestration in place, you've got the automation in place. With few clicks, you can get all your tunnels up and running, right? So it's like one stone and two feathers kind of a thing, right? You've kind of solved the cost problem right you can now take let's say cheaper mpls pipes because you can substitute some of the less important traffic you can send it on internet and lte you no longer have the security problem because all your sites are going to be connected by tunnels right which are ipsec tunnels um, i mean uh, you can always come back to me and say joel i mean you, we could have done ipsec even in the older design right but then you know, if it's fine if it's just three sites, right? You can sit and configure the IPsec tunnels, but what if it's like 50 sites? What if it's 60 sites, right? It's gonna be too uh, complex and too much of a human effort to really sit and configure them and not just configure them, right? Or operationally run a network with so many tunnels, it's gonna be a headache. But we have solved both of those problems now, right? Because of, uh, you know, um, because of ST and because of ST-WAN, you know, we have solved those two problems. Now, again, you know, these two problems are generic problems which most of the ST band providers are going to solve for you. What really interests me with the Silver Peak is where it really shines for me is the productivity part, right? Now, let's dig a deep, little deeper here. So, what are some of the reasons, right? Um, MPLS, I mean, if you're using MPLS network right in the middle, um, you're always going to have any typical network problems. You might have some kind of a packet loss, right? it's a network at the end of the day. I mean, service provider is running it for you, but then at the end of the day, it's a normal network. So you might have some kind of a packet loss because of, you know, some link deterioration and so many other reasons, right? Now, what does Silver Peak bring into the table, right? We have something called as forward error correction, right? So this is again, a very interesting technology, not just with Silver Peak, there are other vendors who give something similar as well, but in, in, um, in its simplest form, what is um, forward error correction? Um, it's basically um, a mechanism where you can insert some parity packets, right? So for example, you've got, um, you know, you've got some kind of, you're sending uh, say three packets, right? From A to B, right? And there is always a chance that the transport is, you know, very um, lossy. So you might lose one of the packet, right? Now, normally if it's a TCP, you know how things work, right? You have the sequence numbers, you've got the, you know, um, you know you've got the acknowledgement, right? Um, you need acknowledgement before you can send the next set of, uh, you know, segments and so on. So that's how your TCP works. Now, if one of the uh, packet is lost, you know, B will not be able to acknowledge it to A and then A will have to resend the packet. So this is going to be, um, you know, uh, the, the experience of this particular, you know, transport is going to be bad, right? The experience of this network is going to be bad because there'll be so many acknowledgements which are not coming through, so you're resending the packets and so on. Now with forward error correction, what you can do is when you're sending the packets, you can insert what they call as some parity packets, right? So using these parity packets, what you can do is at B, even if one of your packet did not make through, right? Using those parity packet, you can reconstruct the packets which were lost. Right? Not just that, you can. You also have capabilities where if the packets are arriving out of order, right, you can uh, put them in order right, before you can send it to the application layer. So there are some very proprietary algorithms which do this. We will not get into that much detail. You can actually look at some of the um, you know, white papers to uh, understand this, but that's how forward error correction works. Okay, coming to the next one, 
the other problems are latency right so imagine you have like a couple of sites which are separated um, you know lengthy um, by lengthy distances right so let's take again you know you've got um, your um, let me actually reduce the size of this give me a second okay so imagine you've got um, you know you've got your a over here sorry right so you've got your site a you've got your site b right and say as of today you know to reach here it's 100 milliseconds so imagine let's take tcp into account right so tcp you know how how it works right so you have imagine you have a server over here you have a client over here right or client server whatever it is right so if you look at this particular um, and you know again when you, I, I take the example of tcp because it's a protocol which works very much based on um, acknowledgements right so you send some data you wait so for some acknowledgement from the other side so in this particular example you are literally waiting for about 100 plus 100 milliseconds which is about 200 milliseconds right before you can send further data right now what what we can actually do here is um, in case of latency right uh, there is um, in case of silver peak there is a feature called as uh, tcp acceleration right or in simplest terms they call it as boost uh, right it's a uh, it's a it's a fancy word but at the same time underlying what it is doing is it is doing tcp acceleration and how this really works is again in the same example 100 plus 100 milliseconds what you can do is you can go and add your uh, you know silver peak appliance right you at the end of the day we are talking about silver peak right it's a st1 appliance just like any other st1 um, you know solution these guys also have boxes, right, which are going to sit at the end, edge of your network. So imagine you're going to have two silver pick up plants, a plants one and a plants two over here, right, <coughs> in front of A and B. So with TCP acceleration, what you can do is here, when 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 the request first went this way, right, the appliance which is sitting here can proxy, right, that particular request and it can answer on behalf of B or in a, sorry in, on behalf of c actually sorry yeah b i meant b right so imagine the uh, the latency here is just two milliseconds right because this is very close by a um, a is very close to this appliance right so now what you can do is as soon as a sends um, uh, the data right uh, as soon as a sends a tcp packet right um, the edge connect appliance or the st1 appliance which is sitting in front of it can proxy the request and it can immediately send an acknowledgement within like say if this if this um, you know the time to reach this is two seconds i think within another two seconds a total of within four seconds you're getting the acknowledgement back correct here you would have, have to wait for 200 milliseconds right so here you're getting it from within two two plus two four milliseconds you're going to get your acknowledgement back right so a can now start sending more data right so you, you see how we have you know speeded up the whole process right so that's that's basically your tcp acceleration again there is a lot of um, i mean a lot of prerequisites like in this case you know the flows right between a and b has to flow through the same appliance the you know to and fro flows right bidirectionally you know has to flow through the same appliance and so on a lot of design constraints uh, requirements are there but you see this is a very cool technology now you are able to kind of um, you know uh, you are able to kind of um, improve your application experience right imagine if you can br reduce the latency from 200 milliseconds to 4 milliseconds it's it's a huge gain next there's another piece which is uh, you know which is very uh, important in most of the modern networks is congestion right now <clears throat> congestion again different ways to solve it right the first thing which comes to your head when you're talking about congestion is in fact congestion and uh, um, prioritizing traffic right so that's another important problem as well right so th these two are I think the first thing which comes to your mind when you when you think about these two is QoS right uh, so I mean QoS is very much necessary in all of the network now prioritizing traffic the thing here is again what really interests me is um, even again uh, if you look at any network topology right you will have to do two things so let's call this as the edge of your network and when i say edge of the network i mean this is where your organization uh, organizations um, you know network ends and this is where the isp's network starts so this is your isp or mpls or whatever it is 
right transport basically and this is your organization generally what you do on your side you do what we call as shaping right on the on the service provider side they do something called as policing right this is um, this is like um, very standard right and I will not get too much into QS now because it's again a very lengthy topic but this is what we normally do right with shaping you're just trying to shape the traffic um, so that it doesn't get dropped on the uh, transport side right now if you look at some of the in the past right um, if you had to do um, I mean and you don't control this right uh, the, the service provider is going to give you a certain um, you know uh, rate right certain um, uh, they're going to give you a certain line rate of sort they're gonna say hey look I'm gonna give you a pipe which is 80 mbps right and they're gonna policy it based on that whenever they see traffic which is exceeding 80 mbps you you can't really control it they might drop it they might queue it that's left up to them but up to 80 mbps they're gonna give it to you right so it is your responsibility on your side that you make sure that you're not sending traffic which is gonna cross that threshold right um, now if you look at in the past right if you had to do QoS if you look at some of our uh, uh, take some of the Cisco configuration guides right you're probably gonna have like you know uh, this fat books right if you look at some of the Cisco press books if you had to configure QoS uh, you know you probably needed a whole quarter or couple of quarters to kind of plan the whole project and th there are a lot of knobs right because you have to do classification you've got to do marking you've got to do um, queuing and you know you've got like a lot of pro a lot of ways to do it right you've got low latency queues you've got priority queues class based weight queuing and then you also have uh, congestion avoidance using tail drop like uh, I'm just blabbering right now but you have got like a lot of um, um, knobs right and you need skilled people to do it but with case of ST SDN or in this case ST uh, Silver Peaks ST van right all of this is pretty simple right it's uh, it's just drag uh, you know it's just um, you know drop downs uh, you know drag drag downs and all of that right it's pretty simple to configure it so they have and I think that's the good thing about SDN right so um, you know all of this um, doesn't need you to really go into the CLI and figure out right um, uh, it's it's very simple because of the automation which comes into play because of SDN right so that's the prioritizing traffic. Now, when you talk about congestion, there's another interesting feature which really caught my eye here with the, with what? With Silver Peak is, they have something called as network memory, right? This is again a very interesting piece. So again, let's take the example of A and B, right? So say this is, I don't know, maybe in a data center and A is sitting, you know, in one of the branch office, right? So this is a branch, uh, this is a branch and this is some data center and, you know, <coughs> As of today, uh, right, um, uh, I mean, generally you have uh, anyone sitting in branch, they might be trying to, I don't know, maybe upload a document, right, or they might be, uh, yeah, they might, let's take the example of uploading a document to some application which is there in, you know, in the data center on the B side, right. Um, but with network memory, this is a very cool feature where what you can do is, this is how normally it works, right, but with with the Silver Peak ST1, what you can do is you can add the, you know, uh, silver peak appliance here in front right so these are the two appliances on either side right what you can do is these appliances can cache the data right they, they can cache so using a bit of caching technology what they will do is now you know after maybe this this happened at 7 a.m. in the morning right but say at a maybe at 10 a.m. right again a wants to a has just um, done some small changes to the document and he wants to upload the document again maybe at 10 a.m. in the morning right so with this network memory feature what we can do is this appliance right it can look at the file which is coming in and it can see that the you know using fingerprinting technology what they can understand is that it's the same document with like some very minimal changes right so it doesn't have to really send the whole data again it can only send the it can send what they call as fingerprints right so they can only send the fingerprint um, and you know the appliance on the other side will be able to understand that you know this fingerprint it will have to reconstruct right because even even the appliance on the other side will have this information because it also has cached the data so it will be able to look at the fingerprint and understand that okay you know um, this is how I have to reconstruct it and then you know the data will be sent to be right so what did you really achieve from this imagine if the document was I don't know maybe 50 MB 
right when you first uploaded it but this time you know because the changes let's say uh, i mean in that 50 mb let's assume about you know 45 mb of the data was still the same right so maybe only 5 mb was changed right so that 45 mb of data you don't have to send it again right so you whatever you're going to send again right will be very less so because of the using this whole fingerprinting technology they can they can kind of reduce the amount of data which is sent on the transfer now this is very useful why because at, at the end of the day what is your transport right it is mpls you're going to use things like mpls or some transport so if i can really save this amount of data right if i can really save from sending 50 mb if i can just send 5 or 10 mb that is a huge consideration right considering you know that's a huge gain in fact right so and ultimately it is going to reduce the congestion in your network right it is going to reduce the amount of data you are sending on the transport which in turn helps you reduce the congestion so this is another cool feature as well you can read again more about this in the white papers you know wherever they are published but that's the whole idea behind um, network memory as well okay so that's um, yeah so i think that's that's those are some of the things you know and you can do with um, you know when when we talk about the capabilities of stvm or specifically silver peak okay so the next part let me just collapse this one one sec okay so the next part which i want to talk about here is your components right so what are your components of this whole um, you know silver peaks st1 solution right so first things you're going to have um, a box right so we talked about this branch offices right so you're going to have some box uh, you know the symbol which is used for edge connect is this triangle generally uh, but yeah so you're going to have this box which is going to sit at the branch it's going to sit at your dc right <clears throat> right you also have options for putting uh, if you want to put this on the cloud right you also have uh, an option for that which is like a virtual option right you can um, just like a CSR 1000 V router which we did in Cisco similar to that you know you can have like a edge connect appliance which is a virtual appliance right the reason why you want this is because now you can make your cloud also part of your HD WAN which is pretty cool right because in your cloud you might have some VPCs and you might want to connect to those VPCs from your branch right uh, yes AWS and Google Cloud everyone they do provide uh, their own routers right they have their own cloud routers but can they provide all the cool features which I mentioned just now? Can they provide this forward error correction? Can they provide TCP acceleration? Can they provide what we also spoke about was uh, network uh, memory here just now, right? So can they provide all these features? No, they can't, right? So uh, if you want all those cool features, right, uh, all the way extending into your cloud, then uh, Silver Peaks ST1 is your uh, option. Right, and that's the reason you need to put this virtual, um, you know, um, you you gotta put this uh, virtual router or virtual um, ST1 appliance in your cloud. But yeah, coming back, uh, what are the other appliances? So you basically have. Um, so again, when I say these boxes, uh, that's why I meant. Uh, whenever I meant boxes, I meant it to be physical boxes, right? So, but you have both the form factors. So you got this physical boxes. You also have the virtual form factor. Um, you know, and they call it call themselves as edge connect appliances the other important piece is the orchestrator right now orchestrator is um, um, you know generally uh, the i mean it's the management platform right so <clears throat> again i like to really compare whenever i'm learning a new technology i like to compare with what i already know so if i compare this with something like cisco's remember we had we manage we smart we bond right so think of orchestrator as one platform which is kind of combining all of that right it is a platform which from where you can do the configuration it's a platform which from where you which which also authenticates and makes sure that only the uh, eligible uh, devices are joining the you know fabric right let's start calling this as a fabric or the overlay and the underlay right so <clears throat> so it 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 it, uh, it kind of validates that as well um, and it also participates in the control plane right because when you talk about sd and generally we are talking about a centralized control plane right and distributed data plane right so orchestrator takes part so it's like think of it as if you already know cisco's viptela solution think of it as the we manage we born we smart clubbed into one and they call it as orchestrator here okay 
um, and maybe one more piece which is uh, which you should probably know is uh, in case of silver peak is the cloud portal right so what is this cloud portal think of it as uh, the licensing portal right so whenever the appliance any of the appliance um, uh, comes up right so they will first go and register with the cloud portal right and the cloud portal will also have information about the orchestrator right so that's how uh, you know your edge connect appliances can then go and register with the right orchestrator like this right so first the cloud portal is very important because once you buy the whole silver peak solution right the silver peak team will make sure that your licenses and everything is registered onto the cloud portal so uh, whenever any of the devices pertaining to those licenses come in and talk to the check-in with the cloud portal and i believe this happens even on a daily basis every i think they have like a every once in a day you know the appliances should go and check in with the cloud portal and um, you know they also have certain criteria that within certain number of days if the appliance doesn't come back and check in with the cloud portal then it will deactivate the licenses and all of that they have some you know workflows of that sort but bottom line what you need to understand is cloud portal is uh, in fact you as an end user of the network right i mean you as an end user uh, of the solution that is if you are a network administrator you don't get to physically interact with this cloud portal think of it as it is there somewhere it is there in the imaginary cloud uh, but um, your appliances will need to go and check in with the cloud portal to get all the licensing information so that it can then go and talk to the orchestrate perfect okay so next thing is let's talk a little bit about uh, what type of data flows would you see in a silver peaks sd van solution right so let me reduce the size of this one sec okay so let's uh, again right come back here and draw a very um, sample topology of how things are gonna be right so let's take for example you're gonna have uh, you know a edge connector plants here maybe this is a branch right? maybe you have one more over here right you might have uh, maybe a headquarters over here right so let's put as headquarters you might have um, you know an edge compliance there you might have one more maybe like a backup headquarters as well right or it might be even a cloud right doesn't matter um, so when you have this sort of a network right and uh, next is you're also going to have some kind of transports right say from the branch you have um, you know say you have an internet transport right and maybe from the in from the headquarters you have both you have uh, your internet and you also have say your mpls right so something like this let's 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 think of this uh, maybe for now let's assume that these both appliances are like active backup uh, kind of a scenario let's say both of these are the same branch and this one is also at the same branch so something like this and then you're going to have tunnels right let me use a different color for that um, you're going to probably have a lot of um, you know uh, i mean if, if these two branches are at different sites you're going to have tunnels here as well right you're going to have all this uh, full mesh type of a tunnels right again just want to clarify here all of these tunnels are going to be brought up to you automatically you don't have to configure this right so as soon as the appliances come in right they are going to join the uh, you know um, orchestrator and then the orchestrator will make sure that all these ipsec tunnels are set up for you on the fly right okay so this is a type of a network which you're going to have okay now there are two types of flows which i want to kind of highlight here one is what is a important flow which is going to be uh, say starting from the branch right it will use the tunnel and go to maybe the headquarters or it might go to another branch like something like this so that's your typical flow right and, I, and you can call this as a um, um, internal traffic right so traffic which say you have a LAN here you have a LAN here so you would want these two LANs to be able to talk to each other right so that's your internal traffic traffic which is originating from your enterprise your organization and terminating within your organization you want to talk between branches you want to talk between your branch and your headquarters right all of that so that's like one of the flow what's the other one let me get rid of that that's the first flow but then the other one is also very important right so the other one is actually <coughs> what we call as um, your local breakout right because again that's a good thing about SD WAN right um, you don't really I mean if you go five years ten years back what we used to do was we used to send if you want to go to the internet right 
you used to send the traffic from the branch all the way to headquarters and from there you used to send it to the internet i mean don't get me wrong you can still do this right even with this solution if you really want to do that you could do that because why people used to do that is they used to have like a very strong firewall sitting here that's why they used to do this technically you can still do this we call this as backhaul right even with this silver peak you can do this but there is another flow right which wherein you can technically have the same traffic come into the branch and then break out directly from here to the internet right so either of these flows are generally called as in case of um, silver peak we call it as pass through flows right so these are the flows which are nothing but where <clears throat> you know um, which which are basically um, um, going to go into the internet right uh, but you can use either of the option I mean you can technically locally break out from here right directly so in this case obviously the traffic is not going to use the ST WAN tunnels it's not going to use those IPsec tunnels right traffic is going to come into the branch and directly it is going to leak out on this particular WAN interface but in this case in the backhaul case it will still use the IPsec tunnels because when the traffic is going to come into the branch it will get onto the tunnel over here right it will get onto the blue tunnel here it will come on to the other side and from here it will break out right from the locally break out or it will break out into the internet so these two are possible when you talk about pass through right and the other one which we already spoke about is the internal traffic that is traffic originating from within one um, st1 uh, behind one st1 device to the other st1 device okay so this is like covers everything we want to understand from a flows perspective okay okay so the next important thing we need to understand when we talk about this is in fact probably the most important part of silver peak right and um, um, I think all the magic happens here so do check this out or be a bit more on uh, alert over here when we talk about this which is what we call as uh, bio right what is bio it is business intent overlay right so it's business intent overlay and what is what does it mean well um, I don't want you to get confused right when you so in fact let me just make sure that I write this right so that you this kind of sticks in business intent and overlay that's the meaning of bio right now when you look at this don't get too alarmed because of the because it seems like something very uh, new right it's not some new type of an overlay right the overlay is still very uh, same as most other st1 vendors out there right you have uh, like like i mentioned earlier right you're gonna have you're gonna have a edge appliance over here you're gonna have another edge appliance here you're going to have some kind of a transport over here right it can be internet it can be mpls it's gonna be lt right so your underlay is still this one which is the physical links right then you have the overlay which is the ipsec tunnels right between these two right obviously you have the whole uh, mechanism that you know the tunnels starting from mpls here are gonna terminate on the mpls the tunnels starting from internet are gonna terminate on internet and so on right so so that you don't have cross connections technically you can do that you can make cross connections if you want but you know that's like all of that it still holds good even with silver peak right just like any other st1 vendors but what is this bio so we have talked about underlay we have talked about overlay already right the ipsec overlay then what is this special overlay business intent overlay right so let me just give the secret out right here if i was designing this solution if i was i don't know maybe a product manager at silver peak i would probably not call this as business intent overlay because it can be a bit con confusing the terms can be a bit confusing I would probably call this as something like uh, you know maybe like I would call this as profiles right maybe like application profiles or something right because that's what it is business intent overlay is just a construct right in silver peak which defines how certain applications right uh, should be uh, handled within the silver peaks network that's it as simple as that let me take an example so by default right when you get into the orchestrator or when you get into the silver peak by default you're going to have few bios which have been set up for you which is like uh, addressing some of the top 
or the common applications right it is going to be uh, i think one of them if i can remember it is real time right then you are going to have something like bulk apps right uh, you're going to have uh, something called critical apps like that right so right from the names you can understand right this is nothing but uh, profiles right so like let's take for example real time right so real time traffic is your voice and video traffic right so what you have with the bio is with the um, with bio or with business intent overlay you can define for voice traffic right let's take for example this guy right real time so the voice traffic which is originating from here and say destining over here how it should be handled right that gets covered in the bio and when i say how it should be handled everything all the settings right all the you know settings in the sense which tunnel should be used right what do you want to do load balancing across two tunnels what if you have you know two tunnels over here not just one tunnel right you might have two tunnels do you want to do load balancing right what type of a topology do you want for this application do you want a hub and spot topology do you want a full mesh topology right um, do you want to prioritize um, high availability over load balancing uh, sorry high availability over high quality so all of that policies right you can define it now application by application you can define it for real time how do you want your silver peak to handle it how do you want it to be handled for bulk apps how do you want it to be handled for critical apps now again this is these few bios come by default right but you have the flexibility of defining your own bios as well right all you have to do is you have to come up with your matching logic you need to figure out you know a way to match that traffic maybe using dscp maybe using uh, some kind of you can say uh, sd1 appliance itself has certain criteria on how to match traffic right it can identify tftp traffic ftp there are certain thousands of applications which it can identify so you can create your own bio you can technically create a bio called netflix right and you can say okay this is how i'm going to identify netflix this is how i want my netflix traffic to be handled Right, so these guys take a very um, application-centric approach to um, ST1, which is something very cool because um, uh, I mean other vendors also do it in a way, right? But um, I think it's not very evident, right? It's all hidden inside the policies and all of that. But in case of Silver Peak, right, they hit it right um, where it kind of matters, right? So they uh, they basically um, you know bring up the whole uh, overlay they bring up the ip sectors and everything and as a network operator you ne really need to just worry about the bios you need to just define your applications which is of importance for you right you need to define how how you want these applications to be handled and you can do this application by application that's the most important thing right you can define real time application how it has to be handled versus how you want to handle maybe default default traffic or bulk apps and so on right so that's basically bios right so don't whenever you look at the word bio don't get overwhelmed it's not some new type of overlay it's just a it's just a way to create a profile it's just a way to create some settings right uh, on how you want your silver peak to handle your up traffic application by application that's it as simple as that right so you define that's why it's called as intent right you define um, your intent you say that look I want this particular traffic to be prioritized I want this traffic um, this is important traffic for me so then you know silver peak will make sure that it is going to push the configuration in such a way that you know that is going to be done for you right that intent is going to be actually met okay cool so what else do we discuss so I think we've covered almost most of the pieces which I really wanted to cover in this overview section I mean there is obviously I mean um, uh, I mean, if you want to do a lengthy, detailed uh, ST1 session, it's going to, I mean, that session itself is going to be hours together, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse of everything, um, you know, the architecture, the features, and why do we do certain things and so on, okay? Um, maybe the other couple of things is, we'll not go in detail, but um, I just want you to know that um, security, right? So when you talk about security uh, yes we are not talking about the ipsec security ipsec tunnels are there it is providing you the security on the you know public internet and all of that but i'm talking more on the terms of um, you know securing uh, uh, 
things like you know how do you protect yourself from threats right so these boxes which we spoke about they come with the you know uh, ideas idps uh, ips as well capabilities right that is you can um, you can basically do your traffic filtering right on these boxes right so which is pretty cool again you have some special licenses to do that um, you also have features of uh, again zone firewall right we have seen zone firewalls in other st1 vendors as well so here also you have you can basically in your whole st1 network you can create different zones and you can define when traffic goes from one zone to other zone you know do you want to allow it do you want to filter it and all of that right what do you want to deny it what do you want to permit and so on very typical zone based firewall so um, you know for a large extent if you if you want you can use this appliance as itself the uh, security appliance as well at the edge of the network right or if you are like one of the Palo Alto people and you want to or you have Cisco ASA or Firepower and whatnot, right? If you want to send the traffic, uh, you know, service chain it, right? To a firewall, which is at the data center, you can do that as well, right? You can do service chaining, right? Or if you have been sold on the SASE hype, right? The SASE, right? You, we have talked about SASE before on the channel, but if you are some of uh, if you are one of the person who is like uh, looking at sassy ex exploring can i send my traffic to zscale or can i send my traffic to cisco umbrella right using i don't know some type of uh, gre and ipsec tunnels and you want to use like cloud security you can do that as well right uh, all of that is pretty much possible with um, uh, silver peaks sd1 right uh, so it's a it's a very um, robust like i said right it's uh, it's a very robust uh, sd1 solution but at the same time the thing which really um, kind of impresses me with Silver Peak is um, it is also very simple in a way that it's very simple for network operators. Uh, the configuration is very simple. The management part is very simple. Um, and I think all props to the people who designed it this way because, um, you know, they have kind of removed all the clutter and kept what is really valuable, what is uh, and how, you know, how simply you can, you don't have to worry about creating very lengthy config templates or uh, you know things like that you know everything is more of a drag drag and drop you know um, selecting check boxes very similar to that right but at the same time you're getting all this robust feature with with very simple ui ux right which is pretty good so that's that and i just want to spend maybe a couple of my uh, last uh, this thing on this topic is uh, i also want to talk a little bit about the designs right what are some of the typical designs which you see in Silver Peaks ST1. Alright, so when you talk about designs, right, um, again, I, I really like drawing parallels with some of the ST1 designs which I have had the privilege to work with in the past, right. So one of the most uh, traditional, let's call it designs here, right, one of the most traditional uh, design, I would say is where, say you have a appliance like this, right and uh, you might have internet connecting to both the you know transports you might have um, uh, you know uh, mpls right connecting to both the transports as well right uh, <clears throat> so in this case i mean obviously you need something like this right you need probably a mpls switch and from here you will have to connect to the mpls provider similar thing goes with the um, you know you will need some kind of ISP switch or internet switch and from that you're connecting to the internet provider right now the problem with this is I mean this is a very redundant solution obviously right why you why you have like this is uh, you have multiple you have the transports connecting to both the you know uh, appliances right and maybe on the other side you will so this is the appliance right this is the transport side this is the LAN side on the LAN side you might have another switch which will do where you can do VRRP right and uh, you can basically make your edge connect appliance as the layer 3 gateway right and you can do vrrp you can do more like an active standby approach right cool so if one of the box goes down the other box will uh, pick up the traffic and it will have both the transports so everything is going to work now the problem with this is it's going to be a little costly for you because you you're going to have um, you know uh, from your service provider right you will need you need to get more than two ips so you need an ip here you need an ip here Right, so um, so um, you need more than one IP. That's what I meant, right? So you need one extra IP in this design, right? Similarly, with the um, MPLS, you'll need uh, you know you understand the situation here, right? You you need basically 
to to get to this redundancy it's going to be a little costly for you but technically this is this is like one of the most common designs even i have worked with right now what is the other option right the other option is remember we did uh, we talked about something like t lock extension in case of vip lock so something similar can be done here as well which is what i mean by that is you can actually have uh, say you can have an appliance like this you can have a, have another appliance right then you can have say internet going from here right whereas you can have uh, mpls going only connected only here right which means you have just one ip if you are getting from your service provider so provider is here and here also the provider is there you are getting only one ip here right and what you can do is <laughs> you can have um you know a uh, uh, high you can have like a logical link here right um, i think these guys do it using vlans but basically what you can do is you can extend right you can extend this transport from here and you can give it to this guy right um so and then you can do the same thing in the reverse direction as well you can extend this transport and give it here right so on this box when you log in and if you check right you will see that it is actually having both the transports it is going to have this dedicated transport which is connected to it and it will be also be able to use this transport through this virtual link right so <clears throat> yeah i think these guys probably call it as subnet sharing if i'm not wrong but it's very similar to the technology which we did uh, we also did something similar in aruba's st branch right we call it uplink sharing if i'm not wrong and we did something similar in viptela as well which was tlock extension right but this is another option where you can get redundancy you are getting redundancy because even if on if your transport goes down the traffic will be sent via the other transport but at the same time you don't really need uh, dedicated uh, you know uh, you don't need dedicated ip address to be given to you um, you you just need one ip per transport and then you can share the that particular link with or that particular transport with the other box using something like this right uh, so yeah this is this is the other option um, this is other common design which you get to see right and on the other side you can use vrrp right like this or if you want if this is a l3 box you can use ospf as well right and you can do something like equal cost multipath and ecmp and stuff right that also you can do <coughs> so uh, yeah i mean sorry not yeah i mean if you want to do active standby then you will have to obviously do ospf in such a way that one of the link is preferred but uh, if you want to do active active then you can do ecmp right so that's that's another common design which you get to see okay uh, another just note i would say before i kind of leave this topic is um, um the thing is i mean if you if i if i remember right right the if you look at any of this box individual box the biggest box possible i think can support up to uh, maybe 10 gig of traffic right that's the biggest is what i have seen i don't know if there is um, better hardware which can give more than 10 gig but um, i believe that's the scenario but now this is going to be interesting right what if uh, you want more than 10 gig right say your lan is sending traffic which is more than 10 gig right so you need a box which can handle more than that then you can go for them because generally if you look at the silver peaks design documents right they will recommend you to do active standby something what we exactly went through right the vrrp approach but um, you know when you have traffic coming in which is more than 10 gig how do you solve this so because each of the box can maximum support 10 gig but if the traffic itself is coming more than 10 gig then you need a better option so in that case you you will have to you don't have any other option but to do active active right so you will have to have one box uh, active and then the second box also will need to be active but that again i think brings about a little bit of challenges on how will you do the qs traffic shaping and all of that right um, so again i will not get too much into it for now but you can read up the documents but th there is an approach you know there is there are designs which will uh, which will answer those questions you can reach out to if you want more details you can even reach out to your silver peaks account uh, managers and i think they will be able to help you out if you are exploring this you know solution but uh, yeah so those are i think the most typical typically if your traffic if i mean i think if your traffic is not going beyond 10 gig right you can do the whole active standby approach but if you have um, you know more than 10 gig then i think the biggest of the box will support only 10 gig so in that case you'll have to do active active and when you're doing active active you need to do some um, you know you'll have to design it in such a way that uh, especially traffic shaping right doesn't become an issue for you right uh, you have to design that in a specific way anyway okay 
so yeah i think this is everything let's just quickly recap right whatever we spoke of right from the top we started with discussing uh, the capabilities of uh, stman right then we uh, talked a little bit about the components right what are the various pieces that make up stman we also looked at the flows various types of traffic flows right uh, which are possible in stman you know the internal traffic the pass through traffic then we talked about bios business intent overlays right what do they really mean right they are basically nothing but uh, settings traffic settings right you can basically define traffic profiles or traffic settings um, on how your silver pick should handle certain types of traffic right which tunnels to use what type of topology do you want certain tunnels to be bundled right what is going to be your primary transport what is going to be a backup transport all those settings which you would normally do with some um, lengthy CLIs right if you are doing this manually you can do here with some drag and drops and then we talked a little bit about security you have on box security that is you can do IDPS uh, you know ideas and all of that um, on box you can do zone firewalling uh, if you are not uh, if you want to do service chaining right that is send the traffic to a headquarters or a data center where you have bigger firewalls you can do that third option is you can also uh, do uh, SASE right which is basically um, you know use something like a cloud security right um, right so, so that you can now deliver um, your network and um, your security right um, and give like a very same experience for anyone trying to connect to your network from any part of the world right if an employee is working from a coffee shop if they're working from their branch office or from a headquarters they're going to get like a consistent experience because you know all your security policies and the networking everything is kind of like centralized and delivered in a very consistent way so if you want to use zscaler you want to use uh, some other you know sassy providers i mean some other um, you know ssc providers to be specific right then you can do that as well last one is we also talked a little bit about the designs right we can use traditional designs where you each of your box is connected to all the transports or you can do like designs where you can have uh, uh, you know where you can share your uplinks where you can share your transports right and finally we also talked about you know generally the recommendation is to use something like an active standby approach right because it really helps with all the asymmetric routing and everything right so when you have only one active box then you don't have the problem of asymmetric routing the flows are going to be you know the the traffic is going to leave the same box and going to come back on the same box that's the reason why most of the network engineers prefer active standby but if you um, there are some scenarios where you can't really solve things with active standby when the capability of the box is limited that is you know uh, you have more traffic than what the box can handle like in this case right the example which we took in that case you have to go for more than one box and then there are certain designs to kind of solve that problem as well in silver peak okay so that being said let's come back to my screen here and see um, let's just go through our topology right so this is the topology which we'll be targeting in this series we have like three uh, regions right london paris and berlin right and you can see um, we have uh, um, you know we have this sp right so it's uh, sorry silver peak one silver peak two three and four five so we've got like five silver peak uh, uh, appliances here these are all virtual appliances because we are doing this inside evng right um, we also have some addressing which we have used right we have three transports let me put it back here so we have three transports we have uh, mpls internet and 4g right uh, you can see the addressing i think i've used a very simple addressing 10.99 starts with the uh, 101 here towards MPLS, 102 towards internet and 103 towards 4G. Similarly here, it then starts with 104, 105, 106. And then for the last site, we have uh, 107 and 108, right? You, you can clearly see the difference between Paris and, uh, so the London you can think of as a very small site, right? It just has only one uh, edge connector plans. Paris has two, but you can see here, <laughs> Uh, so the uh, appliance 3 has connections to two transports whereas the other guy has uh, connections to only one transport so here we will explore that whole uh, you know uh, subnet sharing the redundancy concept which i just talked about right the uh, where you don't where you can share the transports with the other box whereas if you look at the third site here you can see it's a very traditional site where you have uh, each of the appliances having connectivity to both the transports so you can see this guy has connectivity to both the transports you can see the other guy also has connectivity to both the transports this is a very traditional design 
and on the top you know um, I also have like a host here called internet host at 11.1.1.11 which is acting like any other internet uh, think of it as another internet endpoint right um, think of it as 8.8.8 .8 .8. just uh, I'm just simulating a host here uh, I also have connectivity to the internet through my internet transport here right I've done natting and all of that uh, I will be sharing the topology file with you later once the series is done so that you can bring up the topology and I will also be sharing some pre configs so that you can explore this in your own home lab right uh, I also have a management PC here which is connecting into the management network and you can see all my appliances are connected to a management network right the reason is because when an appliance comes up you need to do some minimal configuration in that appliance so that um, you know you can go and talk to the orchestrator right um, <clears throat> so that's the reason I will I needed a management network and I will show you this as we do the lab from the next video so this is the topology you'll understand more as we do the lab uh, you also have land side switches switch 1 switch 2 switch 3 these are the land side switches I have like host connector on each of the land side switches that's a typical SD1 design uh, for understanding more about everything right you can yeah, look at um, the validated solution guides there is section here called st wan design and st1 deploy which is very useful you also have these user guides if you want to set this up in your own lab using evng you can go to the evng's documentation there is a separate section for silver peak so this one has pretty good information about like for example all you need to do is get the orchestrator ova file from aruba's uh, software center right you, you also need the um, you know edge connect appliances over your file right and you can follow the steps here on how to install it in my case technically in my lab if you see I'm not using an orchestrator I'm using a cloud orchestrator so when you talk about orchestrator you have two options one is you can use a on-prem orchestrator or you can also use a cloud-based orchestrator so I'm using a cloud-based orchestrator which means I don't have to install this but in your case if you want you can try this right so that being said the other important thing <coughs> excuse me with silver peak is you really need uh, licenses to get anything working uh, so if you don't have like i mean if you already have licenses in your lab you know great go ahead and follow follow my steps uh, you know as i explore this but if you don't and if you really want to check this out uh, right you also have an option to test drive st1 right you can just go to google and you can just search for test drive st1 uh, right and you will basically get get on this page you have to just put in some information about um, you know your email and all of that and then you will be able to uh, a topology will already be given to you right it's like a, it's like a demo lab of sort right will be given to you and i think you'll have access for it a day or sort where you can just play around uh, with the topology and understand more about silver peak right so this is basically a last resort when you don't have the licenses uh, you know to kind of set up your own topology right um, um, and yet you want to explore silver peak this could be an option otherwise you know I would suggest you to reach out to your uh, corresponding uh, you know uh, silver peak account uh, executives or systems engineers and they'll be able to probably help you with the uh, POCs and all of that right so uh, don't ask me for licenses um, I will not be able to provide the licenses but uh, um, this is this is how I would suggest you if to kind of proceed if, if you're kind of uh, if the licenses are a bottleneck for you to explore this amazing technology right Perf so yeah I think that's about it um, uh, we will catch you in the next uh, video where we'll actually get into the hands-on uh, until then thanks for watching have a good day bye